Okay, so I thought I'd do a quick video factoring using the distributive property. Before I show you that, I just want to show you some really simple math, some kind of arithmetic proof. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking some random, uh, some random multiplication problem. I don't know, like five times four, if you don't mind. I guess you know I'm gonna make my four a different color just to demonstrate this. And it should be no surprise to you that the answer here is five times four is twenty. What I don't think people uh, think about so much is that, that what the distributive property says is this, that if we, if we have this number, if we have add-ins, those numbers that add up to 4, we can write our 4 this way. So let's say we take, I don't know, 1 plus 3, and there's somebody out there saying, why don't you just add them together, because I'm trying to demonstrate this property to you. So I get that during the normal... Uh, order of operations, you would add 1 plus 3 and get 4 and multiply and get 20. I'm saying to you that I know that this is also true, so I want to demonstrate this property. So I'm going to distribute to here and to here, right? And then this is what I'm going to get, I think, right? And I multiply 5 times 1, I'm going to get 5, right? And then 5 times positive 3 is positive 15. And 15 plus 5 is equal to 20. And this 20 right here is this 20 down here. And we can do that any way you want. I mean, let's take this 5 here. 5 times, we're going to want it to be 4 again, so if you don't mind, 4. Um, 9 minus 5 is 4, isn't that right? 9 minus 5 is 4, isn't it? And I'm suggesting to you that multiplication is distributive over addition, and this negative sign is a type of addition. So I'm trying to convince you that if I distribute this to here, and to here. <clears throat> then the answer will come out the same. 5 times 9 is 45. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And again, 45 minus 25 is 20. Nothing changed. And it's really, really important that we're, that we're kind of thinking that way. Okay, so let's try to apply this rule where you'd more likely see it, and where you would more likely see it is when we have num when we have letters instead of numbers. So it might look like this. Uh, you might be asked to factor. You might be asked to factor 12a squared plus 16a. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quantify it. That is, I'm going to put it inside parentheses because I'm going to start factoring out here. And what is the greatest common factor of 12 and 16? Well, I guess I'd start by doing this. And I'd say the factors of 12. This is a great way of factoring, by the way, guys. So think about this. Now here people say the factor of 12 are 1, 2, 3, and no. 1, the lowest one times the highest one. If you do it this way, you're going to get trapped in the middle, which is what you want to know that your list is complete. Is 2 times something equal to 12? Yes, 2 times 6. Is 3 times something equal to 12? Yes, 3 times 4. Is 4 times something? Yeah, but we already have that, so we're trapped there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to ask myself, are any of these things, or which of these things is a factor of 16 also? 1 certainly is. 2 is also. Is there a bigger one? 3 is not a factor of 16, but 4. 4 seems to be our candidate, isn't it? So 4. 6 is not a factor of 16, and neither is 12. So we get 4. So I'm looking for the greatest common factor, greatest common factor. So of the numbers, the greatest common factor is 4. This one has a squared, and this one has a. So a squared is the same as a times a, isn't it? And a is just equal to a. So what's the greatest one they have in common? They both have a. So the greatest common factor of those is a. Now what we're going to do is factor this 4a out. So here's our 4a. It's the greatest common factor, isn't it? And we're going to do this. This 4a times whatever we put here has to give us our 12a back. So 4 times what is 12? 4 times 3. And then a times what is a squared? And we know that that's just a, isn't it? Okay. We have a positive times a positive, because we need a positive 16 here, right? 4 times what is 16? 4. 16 times what is 16a? We don't need anything here, do we? So there's our answer. How do we know? Two ways to check. First off, let's make sure our answer is accurate. <clears throat> and to do that, we're just going to, in our minds, redistribute. So 4 times 3 is this 12. 
a times a is a squared. 4 times 4 is 16 times a is 16a. That works, doesn't it? How do we know we have the greatest common factor? Well, what's the greatest common factor of 3a and 4? And I think we can agree that the greatest common factor that they share is 1. And therefore, this is our correct completely factored answer. So, okay, I hope that was helpful. Let me just go on to a couple of more examples. And then I want to get to something that I think you're going to think is actually really cool, especially the first time you see it. So let's, let's try another one. Let's factor this. So let's factor this first. Factor completely. Completely means to factor out as much as you possibly can, to factor out the greatest common factor. And what we have here is 18 12 and 9. I'll show you where we're going from here. 9. I'm, I'm color coding this for a reason. You'll get it in a second. They all have, so this one has C, and this one has C squared, and this one just has C. And then they also seem to have one more thing. They all have at least one factor of D. This one has D squared, this one has D, and this one also has D. So I'm going to try to find the greatest common factor. So I'm going to look for the greatest common factor here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the greatest common factor of the numbers themselves. And if you can see they are in pink. So what's the greatest common factor of 18, 12, and 9? And it looks like the greatest common factor is, is 3, isn't it? It's 3. So I'm going to take factor out of 3. Now I'm going to the C's. C, C squared, and C, what's the greatest one that they share, right? So C squared is C times C. This is just C, and this is just C, so they only get a value of C out, right? Finally, I get to here. I have D squared, D, and D. What's the greatest common factor of those three? Also D. So what we're going to do is we're going to start rebuilding this thing, if you don't mind. And we know our greatest common factor was 3CD. And that's our greatest common factor, so keep in mind that is our greatest common factor. And then we have to rebuild this thing because we can't just leave it. The, the answer is not 3CD, right? They ask, they're asking us to factor this completely. So we're going to build it back together. 3 times some number gives us this 18. 3 times 6. C times what is C? There's an imaginary 1 being multiplied there. And D times what is D squared? We need another factor of D, right? We want 3 times something, it's going to equal positive 12, so that would be positive 4, isn't that right? C times what is C squared is C, and we have a factor of D here. We only need one factor, so we don't need to do anything there. We're moving out now to the third term, and 3 times some number gives us this 9. 3 times 3, we already have the C and the D, don't we? So how would we check this? What's the greatest common factor of these three things? Greatest common factor of 6, 4, and 3. Now, 6 and 4 are not prime numbers, but we're looking for the greatest common factor. So these numbers, in comparison to one another, are called relatively prime. And they are relatively prime numbers. And let's see if this doesn't work. 3 times 6 is 18. C, CD times D is CD squared. 3 times 4 is 12, C times C is C squared, and then there's our, and here's the D, isn't it? And lastly, 3 CD times 3 is 9 CD. It worked perfectly, didn't it? Okay, so check mark there. All right, um, this is one of those, again, one of those skills, the way you get good at it is to do it over and over. So I'll leave you with that. Make sure that you took good notes.